So let's now talk about firearms. So a lot of our crime scenes are going to include firearms. A few main points first. First of all, when you have a firearm, the firearm is not the only evidence. It can be fingerprints, there can be DNA, uh, there can also be stains on the firearm. So we want to be careful when we are collecting, handling a firearm that we're aware of those other things that could be there associated with the evidence and not mess them up. And so as, as far as a stain, it could be blood stain. It could be blood stain from the, the shooter. It could be blood stain from the victim. You remember from uh, uh, one of the previous classes when I showed that news crew that found the gun and there was blood on the grip of the gun. Now you'd wonder, how do you get blood on the grip of a gun? Well, if that's a semi-automatic pistol, the slide, and you'll see this in a little while, the slide comes back and goes forward. If you don't hold the gun correctly, it can catch the web of your hand. And people can get, you know, their skin cut there and bleed. So maybe that's where that blood came on that one. But there also could be, uh, if it's a close range shot on the front of the weapon, you can have, excuse me, uh, blood stain. You can even have tissue from the victim on the front of the gun, even sometimes slightly inside the barrel. So we need to just be uh, cognizant of that. Another point is firearms should be unloaded and placed in a safe condition at the point of collection. It's at the point of collection in most cases. So if I walk into a crime scene and I see a firearm laying on the floor, I'm gonna look at it carefully and I'm gonna make a judgment. Is this firearm dangerous? Is this going to be a hazard to me or anyone else working the scene the way it is right now? Sometimes you'll find a gun that looks uh, like it's been modified. Uh, it may be homemade, a homemade gun. Uh, it could be damaged in some way. And so you're really concerned that if someone just bumped this thing, it might fire. Maybe you see it's a fully automatic weapon. Well, a fully automatic weapon is not something to be, uh, you know, just walking around, you know, without any concern. You need to be really concerned about that because they can be very touchy. So I look at it and I decide, can it just sit here for now? And most of the time the answer is yes. So we just make sure everybody knows, hey, there's a gun right here. Everybody be careful, don't touch it, don't kick it. Uh, let's be careful. We may even put uh, markers around it to make sure people see it uh, that are working the scene. Then uh, at some point, I'm going to need to collect the item. I'm going to take photographs first and then measurements. Now, if I can safely take measurements, should be able to, I'm gonna do that first. And then now it's time to collect the, the weapon. That's when I make the gun safe. And you basically make the gun safe by unloading it, and then usually by putting it in a certain configuration. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a little while. All right, so we make the gun safe at the point of collection. Also, we like other evidence, we do not cough, sneeze, or talk over any sample being collected or dried or over the weapon itself. When handling the firearm, when we do need to collect it, we do not touch areas of the firearm where latent fingerprints are likely to be found. And that would mainly be smooth surfaces. So we're gonna handle the firearm by touching only the checkered or, or gnarled area, uh, areas of the gun. And I have a little diagram on the next slide to show you that, those areas. But let me say something about fingerprints on guns. On most guns we find today that are store-bought um, and modern, you're not going to get very many fingerprints because they're made with polymers. They're a hard plastic and uh, they are textured. So there's a little textured surface to it and it's really not conducive to fingerprints. And the manufacturers do that on purpose. Now, why would they do that? So the bad guys can get away? No, because if you pay $500 for a gun, you don't want fingerprints showing up all the time. And when you show it to your friends, you gotta wipe it off because it's got fingerprints on it. No, they, they make it so the gun looks nice. 
Plus fingerprints can be corrosive, especially if it's a metal surface. So they try to make it so you can't leave fingerprints. That being said, we still look for fingerprints and hopefully we will find some, um, but that is something to be aware of. We're gonna have much more success finding DNA on a firearm. So DNA on the hand, uh, hand grip uh, is a really good place and on the trigger, those are places that you should be able to find the shooter's uh, DNA, assuming they weren't wearing gloves when they did this. From the previous slide, I talked about where to hold a, a gun when you pick it up. So here is a possible idea here. We've got this checkered or uh, checkered area here on the uh, stocks, and then you have these uh, neural, gnarled area here that someone can grab a hold and pull back on the slide. That's why that is there. So those would be the areas to pick up the weapon when you have to. You do not use a pen and stick it in the barrel. You do not stick something in the trigger guard and lift it up. Uh, those things are not acceptable. Now let's talk about making the firearm safe. So a couple of things on making a firearm safe. Number one, when you're handling the firearm, you never point the firearm toward anybody. You always point it in a safe direction. This applies to while you're making it safe, as well as after it's safe. Just make sure it doesn't point towards anybody. Uh, to make the firearm safe, what you're going to do is remove the magazine, and I'm gonna demonstrate this in just a moment. You remove the magazine if the gun has a magazine. Now, if we're talking about a revolver, it doesn't have a magazine, so we'll talk, uh, you know, we'll figure that out later. But with a semi-automatic pistol, it has a magazine. Many rifles have a magazine. You remove the magazine. Now, the gun is not safe yet because often there'll be a cartridge in the chamber ready to fire. And just removing the magazine just takes out the cartridges that would be ready to fire after that one. They would be automatically loaded. So uh, the gun is still not safe. Then what you do is you open the action. I'll show you how to do this. this it's called the cylinder. The, well, the cylinder if it's a revolver, uh, the breech if it's a, if a if it's a pistol, and you look to see if there is a cartridge in the cylinder or the breech. Then you go ahead and you you remove it. Then what you want to do is lock the slide open or keep it open with a plastic. Uh, uh, tie, a uh, strip tie. If it's a revolver, we use a strip tie to keep the cylinder open. Never attempt to make a firearm with that you don't know anything about safe. Um, it's not safe to do that. So when you get your training, if you get hired someplace, they will give you training. And one of the things you'll do is you'll learn how to make the most common firearms safe. The one I'm going to demonstrate with is a very, fairly common configuration. It's how a lot of guns are. Uh, but they'll show you others. But sometimes you go to a crime scene and you go, I have no idea. Well, don't try to do it on your own. Ask another CSI, do you know how to make this one safe? Or the police officer that's securing your scene, perhaps that person can make it safe for you. Uh, if not, then get on the phone or on the radio and call for your department armorer or range master. Now the armorer is someone who deals with guns all the time. They are responsible for making sure all the firearms owned by the department, including the police officers issued weapons are all in good working order. They tear them down, they clean them, they oil them, they do all that maintenance. And normally someone who is into guns like that knows a lot about different firearms, and that person may be able to help you. A range master is someone at the department who uh, will do the testing of police officers at the firing range to make sure they're competent. And so they know a lot about weapons also, especially about the ones the department uses, but they'll, they normally know a lot. And sometimes the armor is the range master. 
Now, there are some times you cannot make a gun safe, and I will talk about that also. But let's go ahead and just move on to actually making a gun safe. So here I have a firearm, and let's say that I'm at a crime scene and I see it. I am going to be very concerned about this weapon just the way it is. First of all, I see a red dot. That is the safety indicator. Right there is a red dot. And that indicates that the safety is off. Red means danger, red means fire. This gun can fire uh, perhaps if you pull the trigger now. If the safety was engaged, uh, and this is actually the safety right here on this gun, you press it up, it covers the red dot, and then that would indicate the gun is in safe mode, but I still don't trust it. But this is one indicator that I really can't trust this gun. Another thing I see is that the hammer is pulled back. Now the hammer is normally up here, this little end here, that's normally up there when the gun um, is safe. It's back here, meaning that the gun is cocked. The hammer is cocked, it's pulled back, it's ready to drop to, to fire. And then because I know this weapon, I also see that the trigger is slightly back from where it normally is when the gun is safe. Now, you may or may not know that about the gun you're looking at, but if the trigger is back that far, that's probably a good indication too on any other gun. So those are three things that tell me this gun is probably ready to fire. And in a few minutes, we're gonna get into a video to show how these guns operate. So you'll see how the hammer gets cocked, uh, how the trigger you know, gets back like that and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this gun safe. It is evidence, so I'm gonna put on my gloves. If you remember from the slide we just looked at, first thing it says to do is to remove the magazine. So how do we do that? Well, on this gun, there's a little button here and another button on the other side as well that you can depress to release the magazine. The magazine is what is inside the handle here, uh, the grip that holds the cartridges. So I'm going to go ahead and I can touch the gnarled areas or this textured area here. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up slightly. And now I'm going to press those, press down on that button. Now keep in mind that you can have all kinds of evidence here. Cartridges that have been fired and then you find the cartridge case, you almost never, ever, ever will find fingerprints because in the firing process, there's an explosion, a lot of heat, and the moisture and oils from the fingerprint will evaporate in that split second. But there are going to be potentially fingerprints and DNA on the cartridges that were loaded by whoever loaded the gun, or at least the magazine. All right, so now I have removed the magazine. Is my gun safe? Not yet, but we're on our way. So there we have the magazine. Now I need to find out if there is a cartridge in the, uh, in the chamber here, and if so, remove it. So the way to do that is to pick up the gun, and then you grab the, the uh, gnarled area here, and you pull back, and you will then be able to see if there's actually a cartridge in there, and we see it. So that shiny thing there, that's the cartridge. So I'm gonna pull the rest away and it's just gonna drop down through the opening of the magazine or I can hold it sideways or upside down and it'll just fall out. So there we go. So now I have ejected the cartridge that was in there ready to fire. So is my gun safe now? It is, but we want to do one more step that's going to further confirm for people who look at the gun that it is safe. And one way to do that is to pull back the, uh, the slide and lock it in the rearward position. Now on this gun to do it, there's a little lever right here that I have to press to catch it. 
but I pull the slide back and I lock it up. So now the gun is open. We can see that there is no cartridge in there in the chamber. We see that there is nothing, there's no magazine. And uh, so this gun is totally safe. You never mess with the, the uh, safety. That's not necessary. And sometimes when you, if you, if your first step was to put on the safety, if the gun is defective, that could actually sometimes discharge the weapon. So I never touch the safety. All right, so the steps are, we drop the magazine, we open the slide and remove the cartridge that's in there and lock the slide back. Now, if you cannot lock the slide back, another thing you could do is use a strip tie because you'll have these for packaging the evidence. And we put the strip tie, so let's say you can just open it enough to get your strip tie in and then it closes again. But if you put a strip tie through like this, it's, it's gonna be obvious that the gun is safe. When we're packaging our evidence, and we're gonna talk about packaging now, uh, firearms, we're gonna document first, take photographs, um, add it to our notes, put it on a property report. I'll actually demonstrate packaging in a minute. Uh, take measurements, add it to our sketch, all of that stuff. Each item in your crime scene is gonna have a unique number. And then for packaging, it's best to use a gun box, one that's actually designed for this process. Uh, once we have rendered the gun safe, we can put it into our gun box and we need to secure it so it doesn't move around. So gun boxes will often have these punch out holes and then you use a strip tie to secure it. Um, now, something that I just want to show you what not to do. All right. So this was from an exercise that I had a class do a couple of people in a class and it was to make a gun safe and package it. Well, this is what they ended up with. There's a lot wrong with this picture. Number one, is the gun safe? No, it's not safe at all. Look, uh, first of all, you can see the safety is off. You can see that the hammer is pulled back and look at that, the magazine is inside the gun. Also the trigger is part way back. So that's number one, it's packaged and wasn't even made safe. The second problem is it's secured with a strip tie with the tie in front of the trigger. So now if this gun were to slide, it would pull on that trigger, the strip tie would pull on that trigger and that gun would fire and whoever is outside that box down range could be hit. So that is not safe. Here, we see that the strip tie is behind the trigger. Even if the gun's been made safe, do it like that. So these are what the boxes look like. Uh, some departments will just use their own box and they'll punch holes in it. But the nice thing about these is they actually have a diagram or an illustration. So they have long ones for a rifle, long gun. They have the shorter ones for revolvers and pistols. And they even have them for knives. So why do I like the picture? Because it shows which way the gun is facing in the box. Once you put the gun in the box, you can't see it anymore because it's in the box and it's not transparent. Uh, so when you put the gun in the box, it has to face the same way as the illustration so that when people are handling the box, they hand it to you or they're putting it on the shelf, they know which direction the barrel is pointing. So I have my gun here and I need to fill out information on the, the packaging. Like some of these pre-printed things we get from these supply companies, it's got far too much stuff here. We don't need all of this normally. You just do what your department requires. So I'm gonna start here and work down and fill out most of this down here. First thing is for the weapon, it has make. So I'm going to look at the weapon and I see that this is a Beretta. So I'm going to put Beretta.
The model is a 9000S. Usually it's just right there on the weapon. I can read it right there. Serial number. Well, I know that with this weapon, the serial number is right here under the barrel. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that serial number, which is 17131. It asks for caliber. I can see by looking at the markings, this is a 40 caliber. So I'm going to put down the case number. The offense, let's say that this is a homicide. Um, at least I think it is. Exhibit item number. So if this is in my crime scene, item number five, I'm going to put that right here. And it will stay five forever and ever. Suspect, I don't care about that. Location. So I'm going to put the, uh, the location. So let's say it was bedroom floor. Now, you don't have to be super um, descriptive here unless you had more than one gun on the bedroom floor. Then you might want to be a little more specific. You're going to have more specifics in your report, your property report, your narrative, all of that. So it came from the bedroom floor. That's fine. And then the date recovered and recovered by. I don't see where it has time, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the time anyway, because that's pretty standard. All right, so now I have filled this out. All right, now it's time to go ahead and put the, the gun in here. So as you see, there are these holes in the bottom. So what I want to do is first position the gun the same way that the diagram is. So I want the gun to go this way in the box. And then I look at the holes and try to figure out which is the best way to do this. And I see some likely choices there. You see I have the strap going through here behind the trigger guard, or behind the trigger, excuse me. And now I just go ahead and do so, like so. And that's going to hold the gun pretty steady. Some people will put in multiple ties. Nah, usually you don't have to. Okay, then the next thing is I have more from the gun. I've got the I've got the magazine. So what you should do is just put the magazine in the same box. You do not want the magazine separate. All right, because all this will go to your firearms uh, lab. Uh, or the firearm section of your lab. So you just find a way to put it in. There's several holes here. Okay, so now I have these holes here, and I can just go ahead and strip, tie this in. Okay, so now I have that. And then, if that weren't enough, we do have this cartridge that we removed and it needs to go inside too so often what i will do is just go ahead and put it in one of my envelopes just like that it doesn't have to be taped or anything so i've got the cartridge in here i've got the magazine in here and the gun you then just go ahead and close up your box Now, the next thing I'm going to do is seal the box. Okay, so we got that piece on. Now, some places they'll actually expect you to put tape down the sides, but right there, but you really can't get into it, so most of them don't require that. Now there is one last thing to do here, perhaps even two. If there was any possible blood stain on the gun, well, then you're gonna to wanna to use a biohazard sticker. 
And what I like to see is actually using this sticker. It says contains firearm. Now you might say, well, duh, uh, it's a firearms box and there's tape on it and writing, it must have a gun in it, but that's not really the purpose. Now, if, if you had just a plain box, this would be really good. But the reason I like it is it says here, weapon has been cleared and rendered safe. Now, if your gun is not safe, you need to make sure it's written on here, unsafe, whatever. Uh, but you, this says, look, it's safe. And it also has a space for who made it safe. So if you're the one who made it safe, you put your name here. If the officer protecting your scene made it safe, you have the officer that made it safe, put their name here. And then everybody knows that it is safe and who did it. So that is how we package a typical firearm. Here we have the FBI evidence response team with uh, a long gun that they are bo boxing up and they have all the strip ties there. Sometimes you may have a gun you cannot make safe. It may be damaged or something of that nature. Well, if it's a, a firearm, a handgun, uh, one way you can do it is to have one of these cases that um, you can purchase. And basically it's a Pelican case and on one end it has a steel plate. And so you go ahead and put the gun in your gun box. It fits inside and then if for some reason your gun discharges while it's in this case, the bullet will hit the steel plate. 